you say, okay, so fine, you adopt a little responsibility for yourself and you can sleep with a clean conscience. What happens if you adopted full responsibility for yourself? And then for your family, lots of the people who are coming to talk to me say now, I've been really trying to put my family together. Like I've made that a goal. I'm trying to heal my family and bring it together and it's working. So here's a story. I love this story, man. It just killed me. I was in LA at the Orpheum. And you know, it's rough downtown in LA and places around the Orpheum too. And Tammy and I, my wife, um, because she's traveling with me and is a big help, by the way. Um, we were wandering around downtown LA the morning after the talk and uh, we are walking down the street and we were on streets we probably shouldn't have been on. But any, in any case, because what the hell do we know being stupid Canadians? And so we were walking down the street and this car pulled up beside us and this kid hopped out. And this good looking Latino kid, 20, 21, something like that. He jumped over and he said, uh, he's all excited. He said, are you Dr. Peterson? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, I'm really, really happy to meet you. Um, I've been watching your lectures for like a year and a half and uh, I've been trying to put my life together and it's really working. I'm really doing way better. I really wanted to thank you. And so it's lovely eh, when you're walking down a kind of rough area and somebody pulls up beside you and they jump out of the car to tell you how much better their life is. That's a pretty good morning. And so, but then that isn't all that happened. <clears throat> he ran back to his car. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute. He went back to his car and he got out of his dad and they came over together and his dad was just smiling away, like a real smile, you know. And so was the kid and they had their arms around each other and they said, look, like we've really been working on our relationship for the last year and a half and it's going just great. And we want to thank you. And the father said something like, I'm really happy that you got my son back to me. It's like, yes, that's what this bloody tour has been like. It's great. And everybody that's coming to these talks, that's what they're trying to do. You know, I got 3,000 people in each audience and what they're trying to do is figure out how can I take maximal responsibility for my own life? How can I imbue it with the meaning that helps me withstand tragedy and suffering? How can I be a better person? And wouldn't it be great if that was of optimal benefit to my family and the community? You're getting very emotional about this. Well, it's something, Joe. Jesus, I've no. seen like 150,000 people in the last two months. You know, and this is what it's... Well, you'll have a chance to talk to Ruben about this too. This is what it's been like. It's so positive. I can't believe it. And it's just one person after another saying, like, look, I was, I was having a rough time. I'm really happy that I've been encountering what you've been talking about. I've really been trying to put things together, and it's really helping. Yeah, Ruben was pretty blown away by it. We had a long conversation about it, about he just feels like there's some crazy movement going on, that something's changing in the world because of this, this new avenue of learning and developing is opening up for these people. Well, well, and, I, and I've been thinking about that too, because, you know, you, like I said at the beginning, you, if you're surfing, you don't want to take responsibility for the wave. And so, you know, I mean, first of all, a lot of what I've been telling people are things that I've gleaned from the clinical literature and the psychological literature. It's not like I'm coming up with this of my own accord, right? I'm transmitting information that I've learned from very, very wise people. And so there's that. But also, we don't want to underestimate the utility of the technology, right? Because we have this long form technology now and it's enabling us to have this discussion. And so we can get deeper into things publicly and socially than we were able to before. And I see this, I see this as a manifestation of that. And, and, as in, and I'm hoping too that maybe, maybe what's happening, because we're going to have a lot of adaptation to do in the next 20 years as things change so rapidly we can hardly comprehend it. And hopefully the way we're going to be able to manage that is to think. And hopefully these long form discussions will provide the political or provide the public forum for us to actually think, to actually engage at a deep enough level so we'll be able to master the transformations. And I think that's possible. I mean, part of the reason that I wrote this book and well, part of the reason that I've been doing what I've been doing for the last 30 years is because I really have believed since 1985, something like that, that the way out of political polarization, the way out of the excesses of the right and the left is through the individual. I think the West got that right. The fundamental unit of measurement is the individual. And the fundamental task of the individual is to engage in this process of humble self-improvement. I believe that's the case and that's where the meaning is and that's where the responsibility is. And I think and I'm hoping that if enough people in the West and then and then in the rest of the world for that matter, but we're very polarized in the West right now. If enough people take responsibility for getting their individual lives together, then we'll get wise enough so we won't let this process of political polarization put us back to the same places that we went so many times in the 20th century. I don't see another antidote for it. It's not political. It's ethical.